Good morning. morning. We want to welcome each one here this morning on a cold and icy morning, and yet we're thankful that we can come together as God's people to worship Him. And it even makes us more thankful for the day that we had yesterday, um, that that was a very enjoyable day, even though it was cold. It's good that we can come together as God's people to worship and to praise Him. Our call to worship this morning is printed for us in our bulletins. And it comes to us from Psalm 146. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I Do not put your trust in princes, in mortal men who cannot save. Blessed is he whose help is in the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God. He upholds the cause of the oppressed and gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets prisoners free. The Lord watches over the alien and sustains the fatherless and the widow, but he frustrates the ways of the wicked. Praise the Lord. And shall we praise our God this morning by singing from number 416, We're Marching to Zion. to 
beautiful, beautiful Zion. We're marching upward to Zion, the beautiful city of God. And our God greets us this morning in these words. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and Jesus Christ, his only Son, through the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And our God, having greeted us, let's take a moment to greet one another.
sins are washed away from the heavens mercy streams of the Savior's love for me Hosanna Hosanna to the Lamb that was slain Hosanna Hosanna Jesus died and rose again saving arms of God. I will sing salvation songs. Jesus Christ has set me free. Hosanna, Hosanna to the Lamb that was slain. Hosanna, Hosanna Jesus died and rose again. be seated. And thank you very much for, for leading us in song, very fitting songs. And Dal has asked if he could have a few words. Um, so Dal, if you want to. Thank you for sharing that, Dal. And yes, thank you for everybody who worked together for a very good day for Rex and Ruth. Um, it was a, a blessing for everyone. And I think we especially experienced God's grace in that. It's, we had really a perfect day. We had to choose one day out of the week. Um, that was the best day. And, um, God blessed us in that. I forgot my sheet, so I'm just going to stand here, but we'll do our responsive reading of the law. And God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or his manservant or maidservant, his ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. The Lord is near to all who call on him, 
to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him. He hears their cry and saves them. And at this time shall we go to our God in prayer. Our Father in heaven, we come unto you this morning and we thank you that you are our God, a God who's made the world and everything in it, a God who's made us, and a God who gives our lives meaning. For while we were sinners, you loved us and you sent your Son to become one of us to come and die. For us. And we thank you, Lord, that he rose again, that he conquered our sins. He conquered death for us. So we can anticipate eternal life, a life that begins here, a life that begins in praising you. And we thank you that we can come as your people and we can gather together and worship and praise you, and that you accept the praise that we bring because of your Son, Jesus Christ. We pray for those who cannot be with us on this day, for those who are struggling with health problems, for those who struggle with the effects of old age, for those who are struggling with their work, they're dealing with cattle. Lord, we ask that you will bless them and give them strength in their labors. We ask, Lord, that we, your people, we, your people may always remember that you are with us and you are watching over us wherever we may go. And we thank you, Lord, that you were with us yesterday. We thank you that you were with Rex and Ruth, that you gave them a good day for a sale, and that you gave them peace. Lord, we pray that you will continue to be with them, continue to bless them. We pray, too, for others who are dealing with problems. We pray that you will be with Jean, Lord, and we ask that you will bless her. We pray that you may relieve her headaches. Lord, we know that you are the great physician, and you alone give healing. And you give healing to the aged. You also give healing to little babies. And we ask, Lord, that you will be with each one who needs the touch of your hand today. We ask that you will be with those who, who are struggling. We pray, too, Lord, that you will be with those who are celebrating. And we pray that you will, will especially bless Cassidy and and Trevor, as they plan to be married at the end of this week, and we ask, Lord, that you may calm their nerves and that you will give them a sense of peace and joy. We ask, Lord, that you will bless them in their marriage and that they may have you at the center of their marriage. Lord, we ask that you may be the center of each of our families. Help us always to focus our lives around you. So often we get distracted by the many activities that are going on and we forget. We forget to worship you in all things. We thank you, Lord. We thank you that we can gather together as your people here this morning and we can worship you in freedom. We thank you for this country in which we live. We thank you for the history that you've blessed us with we thank you for those who've given their lives so we can live and worship in freedom. And we ask that you will be with those who are protecting our country today. We ask that you will watch over and protect them. We ask that you will be with the leaders of our nation. We ask that you will give them wisdom, discernment. We ask that you will give them hearts that seek to do your will. May each of us, Lord, be blessed with your spirit, with hearts that seek to do your will. And may we be a people whose God is the Lord. 
who continually look to you and to seek to do your will in all things. We pray, Lord, that you will be with the farmers as they anticipate a time of planting. And as we look outside, it doesn't look like planting at all. And yet we know, Lord, that you are faithful to your promise that as long as the earth endures, there will be seed time and harvest. We ask that you will give them patience as they wait for this too. We ask that you will be with the children, the young people, as they finish out a school year. Lord, we ask that you will give them patience and diligence in doing that too. And for the teachers who teach them, we ask that you will bless them. Lord, help us as your people to work together for the good of one another and to do it in a way that brings praise to you. We thank you that we can be your church. And we ask that you will bless us as we do that here today and each day of our lives. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. At this time, we invite the children to come forward for our children's message. It's good to see each of you here this morning. You're, you're looking good. Um, I brought something along this morning. Um, can you tell me what you see? You see a dot. What do you see? You see nothing, a white paper, piece of paper. You all see just a plain white piece of paper. I shouldn't have had that one behind it first, but what do you see now? You see a dot. Anybody else see anything else? Just, just a dot? Isn't it funny, I held this one up and you saw a piece of white paper, and I held this one up and you saw just a dot. The piece of white paper is still there, isn't it? And yet, we see the dot. And kind of, we do that often in life, too. We remember that God is God, and we can see God, that he's made the world and everything in it. But then we get a little problem, and it's easy to forget that God is even there, and all we see is our problem. And yet, sometimes, God gives us problems so that we see him better. Um, when you go to school and your teacher grades your paper and gives it back to you, what's the first thing you look at? Your grade. You're right. What do you like to see on the top? You like to see an A, an A plus, yeah. Do you always see that? No. You've got good teachers. Um, teachers won't always give you A's, and they'll give you problems that are harder than sometimes your mind's function. And they do that so it causes you to think better. And God sometimes gives us problems too so that we can see that we need him. Because we can't handle our problems, we can't handle our sin. And it's good for us to, in our problems, look to him. And remember that he is always there. He doesn't change. And he loves us. And yes, last week we, we celebrated Easter. We celebrated Jesus rising from the dead. And that covers all of our problems in this life. So we can be, be thankful even in the midst of problems. You know, I asked you about your having classes in school and getting grades. I remember going to college, and one of the first classes I had to take there was a class called botany. It was required for me in my major. The next year, they didn't require it no more. But the year I was there, they required it. It was a terribly hard class. Um, 
I was thankful at the end of the semester I got a D. Um, a third of the class dropped out the first week. They didn't, weren't, weren't required and they weren't staying. Um, but I learned a lot from that class. I learned if I worked and worked, trusted God, studied, he granted me what I needed. I didn't need an A in the class. I just needed a D. And he gave me the D. Um, there was others who got A's, but um, very few. Uh, very, very few. <laughs> and, and the humbling thing of it was the professor I had in college grew up just five miles from me, and I never knew him. And it seemed like he almost liked to pick on people from back from South Dakota. He, he thought he had kind of rose above that. But I was thankful to make it through that. And I learned much from him. And later I got to preach in his church. And he come up and he thanked me. And we as God's people sometimes don't see those around us even as a blessing. And yet God puts them there. God puts them there and we can learn to be a blessing to to those around us. And I brought something along this morning that I would like to, to share with you. And it, it's, a, it's a basket. And if you look in there, you'll see different things. There's a variety of things in there. And yeah, you kind of want to grab them already. You want to get your first choice. We all like to have that. And if I I'm going to ask you to each pick out two things, two different things. You're welcome. <laughs> I get kind of a kick out of how those raspberry blow pops were kind of searched for out of there, and there's probably none left. Did you each get two things? Okay, you each got two things. And you look at them, and which one looks the best to you? You look in your hand. Okay, now I want you to look back at the congregation, and you're given an opportunity to give your best to somebody else. So I want you to go give what you think is the best to somebody else. And we remember that Jesus gave his best for us. And when we get things in life, it's an opportunity. It's an opportunity to bless others. And I saw yesterday people using their time to bless others. The last month, people worked together to bless each other. And you have an opportunity each day to bless others with what God has given you. And he's given you talents. He's given you many things. So I, I trust that you'll, you'll bless others those around you. And thanks for coming up this morning. And always remember that Jesus gave his best for us. I'm trusting many of you adults will get a blow pop. For our scripture readings this morning, we begin by reading from the book of 2 Kings, 2 Kings chapter 6, and we'll read verses 8 through 23. I, I love studying the book of 2 Kings. It's a very interesting and intriguing book, about, much about the book of Elisha, about the life of Elisha. This morning we, we look at chapter 6, beginning at verse 8. Now the king of Aram was at war with Israel. After conferring with his officers, he said, I will set up my camp in such and such a place. The man of God, 
sent word to the king of Israel, beware of passing that place because the Arameans are going down there. So the king of Israel checked on the place indicated by the man of God. Time and again, Elisha warned the king so that he was on his guard in such places. This enraged the king of Aram. He summoned his officers and demanded of them, will you tell me which of us is on the side of the king of Israel? None of us, my lord the king, said one of the officers. But Elisha the prophet, who was in Israel, tells the king of Israel the very words you speak in your bedroom. Go and find out where he is, the king ordered, so I can send men and capture him. The report came back, he is in Dothan. Then he sent horses and chariots and a strong force there. They went by night and surrounded the city. When the servant of the man of God got up and went out early the next morning, an army with horses and chariots had surrounded the city. Oh my Lord, what shall we do? The servant asked. Don't be afraid, the prophet answered. Those are who are with us are more than those who are with them. And Elisha prayed, O Lord, open his eyes so he may see. Then the Lord opened the servant's eyes, and he looked and saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. As the enemy came down toward him, Elisha prayed to the Lord, Strike these people with blindness. So he struck them with blindness, as Elisha had asked. Elisha told them, This is not the road, and this is not the city. Follow me, and I will lead you to the man you are looking for. And he led them to Samaria. After they entered the city, Elisha said, Lord, Open the eyes of these men so they can see. Then the Lord opened their eyes, and they looked. And there they were, inside Samaria. When the king of Israel saw them, he asked Elisha, Shall I kill them, my father? Shall I kill them? Do not kill them, he answered. Would you kill men you have captured with your own sword or bow? Set food and water before them, so that they may eat and drink and then go back to their master. So he prepared a great feast for them, and after they had finished eating and drinking, he sent them away and they returned to their master. So the bands from Aram stopped raiding Israel's territory. And we turn to the Gospel of John. John chapter 14, and we'll read the first seven verses. Jesus says, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I'm going there to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really knew me, you would know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. And then we turn ahead to the Gospel of John, chapter 20. And we'll read verses 24 through 31. Now Thomas called Didymus. One of the twelve was not with the disciples when Jesus came, so that as others' disciples seen him, 
told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands, and put my finger where the nails were, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe it. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them, though the doors were locked. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, see my hands, reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus did many other miraculous signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. This is the word of the Lord, and may God add his blessing to it. A few years back, there was a song that went along with a movie, which I I never seen. But uh, my kids occasionally would sing this song, and some of you probably heard it. What do tigers dream of? What do tigers dream of when they take a little tiger snooze? Do they dream of mauling zebras? Or Halle Berry in a cat woman's suit? But we can say, what do tigers dream of? But what do we, what do we as people dream of? This past week, I was reminded of my father-in-law when my son, who has, I think, eight pigs, just about ready to butcher, but not quite, and he was out of corn for them, said he was wondering whether or not he should buy more corn to finish him out the last 20 pounds before he sold them to be butchered. And I remembered my father-in-law saying when he was first married and they struggled greatly with finances, he would dream at night that all the pigs were around the hog feeder squealing and there was no feed in the feeder. It was his life, and it's what he thought about. It's what he was concerned about, and so he dreamed about it. It was a fear of his that he wouldn't be able to take care of the animals that were trusted to him. And what is it we fear? What do we think about? What do we concern ourselves with? with. I remember one man after we had a presidential election was just really distraught. Our nation is going to the tubes. Where is God? And another man said to him, God isn't building a nation. God is building a kingdom. What God sees is much bigger than what we look at. For those of you who are familiar with the poem, The Weaver's Shuttle, it talks about how we look at the underside. We look from the bottom. God looks from the top. And he sees what he's doing and how he's working in our lives to accomplish his purposes. As we look at the passage from 2 Kings this morning, things weren't exactly like the people in that story perceived them. The king of Aram was mighty and powerful, and they pretty much ruled the world, and his army would attack and ravage 
the other nations. And there was this small country of Israel close by him. And he thought, I will capture them. I'll capture them. I'll set my troops here when they're coming by, when their soldiers are coming by, and I'll capture their soldiers and I'll have their whole country. But every time, every time he did that, the soldiers didn't come that way. The soldiers didn't come that way because Elisha warned the king of Israel. He said, this is what Aram's doing. And Aram became very frustrated. He was certain he had a spy in his midst. And he says to them, which one of you is a spy telling the Israelites what we're doing? And it seemed like Elisha was quite well known. And one of them said to him, there's no spy among you. But Elisha the prophet in Israel hears the very words you speak in your bedroom. Just think about that a minute. Just think if there was someone who heard every word you said, wherever you were. It'd be kind of intimidating, wouldn't it? Trust me, I don't know the words you speak in your bedrooms. It's good I don't. Um, but God does. God does know all the words we speak all the thoughts we think. But the king of Aram was intimidated by this. And so he says, let's go capture this Elisha. Stupid. Extremely stupid when you think about it. If Elisha knew exactly what he was saying in his own bedroom, he knew he was coming. And yet, he goes to try to capture him. He goes to try to catch him. He sends a band of soldiers. They surround the town of Dothan where Elisha's at. And one of Elisha's helpers looks and sees we're surrounded. Just imagine the army. Army of Russia. They send out a delegation. They surround armor. It'd give you fear, wouldn't it? They're going to take us away. And yet... Elisha says to the man, he says, those who are with us are more than who are the, with them. He said, what do you mean? And he says, God, open his eyes, and he can see the chariots of angels surrounding me. The soldiers come, and, God, and Elisha prays, smite them with blindness. And we're not sure if it was a literal blindness that they couldn't see anything or just they totally were confused because Elisha walks up to them and he says you're in the wrong town the man you're looking for isn't here I'll take you to him and he leads them over to Samaria the capital of the Is Israel where the army of the Israelites was he leads them right into to be captured and then he opens their eyes we're in a bad place now. And the king of Israel, he's delighted. <laughs> Shall I kill him? Shall I kill him? He says. Um, Elisha says, no. When you capture a king from another country after you've defeated him, do you kill him? No. You kind of hold him as a prize. Beat him. Show him God's goodness and mercy. And they set a banquet before him. They feed these soldiers. And the soldiers go back. And they tell the king, we went to capture them and we were smitten with blindness and then we were captured really and they fed us. They treated us like kings. They lived out Romans chapter 12 to live at peace with even your enemies. We do good to remember that we're all here people on earth made in God's image for just a little while. And we do good to try to live at peace. At least do everything we can to make that possible. And yet sometimes, sometimes we have a hard time seeing it, don't we? 
we have a hard time seeing ourselves living at peace with others. If you think about this past week, the many different things you went through, our thoughts can change greatly from day to day to week to week. And you think about what you did last Monday. Sometimes I have a hard time remembering that. And you think of all the different things and where our thoughts go in that time. Last week, Monday, I was doing a funeral. On Tuesday, I was on the road to Sioux Falls to see someone who was really sick. Wednesday, I had a council meeting, and my thoughts went all over the place. And yet, God is with us in all those times. And it's good for us to always look to him, to look to him to give us grace for living a day at a time. So we look at the passage we read in John chapter 14. It comes right after the Last Supper. The Last Supper was given, and Jesus and the disciples were headed to the Mount of Olives. And Jesus talks for a while with his disciples, and he says, Take heart. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you that I'm preparing a place for you that where I go, you may be also. And Thomas, Thomas is puzzled. He followed Jesus for three years and he says, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? And Jesus says to him, I, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He who believes in me, he who believes in me shall have eternal life. Thomas was having a hard time seeing it. And he says, those who've seen the Father have seen me, and since you've been with me all the time, you've been blessed. You've been blessed that you've seen God. Trust in him. I am the truth. And when we give our own opinions up to the truth of God, we find that we're blessed. We find that we're blessed in eternal life. And yet, for the disciples, for us, we often, we often have a hard time seeing that, don't we? Sometimes it takes someone who's been in a bit more difficult circumstances to really trust that God is in control. Yesterday at the sale, I saw people gather around a bunch of stuff, and people looked at it all different perspectives. One would look at it and say, boy, what a bunch of junk. Someone else would look at, boy, what an opportunity. What an opportunity to get a good deal. Some of you thought you got good deals, took them home. I I was blessed with a good deal. I bought two big mirrors, took them home, mounted one above my daughter's dresser, and she came in and looked at it. Oh, Dad, I love it. I was a hero for two and a half dollars. Um, (laughs) And yet, standing at the sale, we don't always see the opportunities that lie before us. There was another man, he bought a little set of sockets for 150 bucks, and I thought, what's he doing? Collector's item. International sockets. I imagine if there had been John Deere sockets, they'd have been collectors too, but to him, they were collectors. No, they wouldn't be, some of us. Um, but we see different things. And sometimes... It takes problems. It takes problems to really see the grace of God shown to us. And Thomas and the disciples would experience something. They would experience something that would test their faith and show them how small their faith was. Because Jesus would be captured that night, taken from them. They would see him crucified and die. 
they would see him tortured, taken from them, and all their hopes as to what he would be died. They couldn't imagine anything else. And yet Jesus rose again. He rose again just as he promised them they would, but they could never hear that. They could never see that while they were living with him because they always were focused on him establishing the kingdom of Israel rather than the kingdom of God. He died for their sins. He rose and conquered death for them to give them eternal life, something far greater than the kingdom of Israel. And Jesus died and rose again to conquer our sins, to give us eternal life, to give us a reason for living. And Thomas wasn't with the disciples that first Easter evening when Jesus came and stood amongst their presence and none of them believed him. We talked about that last week. And he had to eat some fish in their presence before they believed that he really was Jesus. And Thomas hears the story and he says, no, I can't believe it. Unless I see his hands, his feet, put my hand into his side, touch his nail prints, the nail holes in his hands, I won't believe. And Jesus shows up and he right away says to Thomas, Thomas, here I am. Take your fingers, put them in the holes in my hands. Put your hand into my side. Stop doubting and believe. And Thomas replies, my Lord, my God. And Jesus says, you believe because you've seen me. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. And yet Jesus gave Thomas what he needed to believe. And Jesus gives each of us what we need if we look to him, to believe, to trust in him. It may be the hardest of circumstances, sometimes the hardest of circumstances, bring out the best in us. I mentioned this past week I went to Sioux Falls to visit a man in the hospital, it's very weak. His wife was very anxious. We prayed for him. She prayed for him. She kissed him over and over and over again. 70 years old, just like newlyweds. Isn't it amazing how when we see something being taken from us, all of a sudden, we're reminded of our love. I was blessed in visiting them. She prayed, Lord, you know that he's the only person I have left in this world. Please spare his life. And she would kiss him again. We have a little bit of time. A little bit of time in this life to love Remembering that we are loved by Jesus, the one who died for us, so we can have eternal life. And it changes the way we look at every day. We can take a day that we would normally spend working to make money and see an opportunity to help someone. We can look at our money and say, hey, here's an opportunity to help someone. Yesterday I saw people helping each other load things up for a family who lost everything in a fire. God gives us mercies each day to be a blessing, to love those around us, remembering how much he loved us. May we too see his hands, his side, his thorn-scarred brow. May we see him each day that he rose from the grave so we can have life. And may we live it 
abundantly, knowing we are loved far more than we deserve. Amen. Our Father in heaven, we come unto you, and we thank you. We thank you that you who are God and perfect and holy is also loving beyond what we can imagine, beyond what we see. Lord, help us to always trust in you, to see each day as a day given to us by you, to live for your glory as we love those around us. In Jesus' name, amen. And now shall we stand and profess what we believe in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated, and while our offerings are being received, we'll sing number 562, Be Thou My Vision. Father in heaven, we come unto you in this morning, 
and we thank you. We thank you for blessing us far more than we need or deserve. Help us to see that all that we have is a gift from you to bring glory and praise to you. We thank you, Lord, this morning for an opportunity to give back a portion of what you've blessed us with, and we pray that you will multiply it, that you will use your church here on earth to touch the lives of many, that they may see you as the risen Savior, the one who died and rose for them, the one who died and rose for us, the one who gives us meaning in living each day. And may you be praised forever and ever with all the saints as we gather together at the end of our lives. We ask this in Jesus' name. Thank you very much, Dean. Thank you, Dean, and thank you to each of you for giving me the opportunity to come here. It's quite humbling. I always feel guilty for being paid for doing something that I enjoy. And pray that God blesses each of us as together we worship as we live together. For our benediction this morning, I turn to the book of 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, love does not delight in evil, but rejoices in the truth, it always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres, love never fails, but where there are prophecies they will cease, where there are tongues they will be still. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when perfection comes, the imperfect disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put childish ways behind me. Now we see but a poor reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. Now these three remain, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you his peace as you seek to live lives loving one another. Amen. And for our closing song, we sing number 361, verses 1, 4, and 5 of Worship Christ to the Risen King. Christ has conquered death and hell. Sing as all the earth rejoices, resurrection anthem swell. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the risen Doubt may lift its head to murmur, scoffers mock and sinners jeer. But the truth proclaims a wonder, thoughtful hearts receive with cheer. He is 
risen, He is risen, now receive the risen King. We acclaim your life, O oh Jesus, now we sing your victory. Sin and hell may seek to seize us, but your countenance keeps us free. Stand in triumph, stand in triumph, worship Christ the risen.